how is it that we have a Winston Churchill Museum in the middle of Missouri? After World War II, you know, Winston Churchill, who helped the Allies win the victory in Europe, lost an election. And um, it was really in the wake of that defeat, election defeat, in the summer of 1945, he received a letter from Westminster College in Fulton uh, asking Winston Churchill to come to the campus to give, her, give a speech. On the bottom of the note, there was a, 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 a handwritten scrawl that said, this is a wonderful school in my home state. If you come, I'll introduce you. Best regards, Harry Truman. Churchill accepted. He had lost the election, but he knew he was back in the game with the, with the, with the president. So that's, that's how Churchill came to Missouri. It was really extraordinary. Without, without Truman's intercession, uh, I'm, I'm convinced Churchill would not have come. But um, the speech that he gave on the campus here at Westminster College um, changed the world. It really did. It was here where Churchill warned that an iron curtain was descending across the continent. Uh, and he saw that Soviet communism was the next great world threat. And he used the Fulton platform, the Westminster College platform, to make that warning. His visit brought masses. Um, can you take us back to that day? or the lead up to when he actually arrived? 20,000 people gathered on the streets of Fulton to catch a glimpse of the motorcade as they went by. Um, almost 3,000 people huddled in the gymnasium, which was the largest building on campus, uh, to hear Churchill's speech. How did this all rope together and come to be? Well, you know, after Churchill's speech um, was seen as prescient, I mean, he really started the Cold War era here in Fulton. Uh, and by the 1960s, when the Cold War was raging and um, the college, Westminster College, said, we'd like to build a memorial or a, a, a tribute to the speech. And you can imagine the committees formed, let's put up a statue, let's put up a plaque, and someone says, let's bring over a Christopher Wren church that was bombed in World War II uh, and relocate it, rebuild it from London to Fulton and make it a memorial to Churchill. Okay, uh, and that's what happened, right? Uh, and it was it was it was a bold move, almost as bold as inviting Churchill to Fulton in the first place. And um, they did it. Churchill was 88 years old in 1963. He knew about it, and he endorsed the project. Let's talk about the museum downstairs. Sourcing these materials that you have downstairs is a very lengthy, full of research process. Talk a little bit about that. Well, it, it's a great responsibility to protect these treasures from the past. You know, Churchill's near final draft of the Iron Curtain speech is in the archives downstairs. Those types of objects and paintings and letters and documents, um, these eyewitnesses to the past, these primary sources, not what a professor says about an object or what a historian says, but what the object itself says um, to acquire, to catalog, to inventory, and to use those objects to inform and hopefully inspire a new generation to learn about the past. Uh, we recently added a Churchill painting. Churchill was a great, talented painter. I don't know how he found the time, but he painted over 500 canvases in his lifetime. Uh, and we, um, we preserved those in an exhibition here. Um, we actually, two days ago, acquired the chair you're sitting in. Uh, these chairs were owned by um, Lord Randolph Churchill, Winston's father. They were at Blenheim Palace, where Churchill was born. The last king of America, George III, was, was alive when these chairs were made. And they've gone down throughout the ages, and now they're here to be preserved and shared. I mean, in my mind immediately goes, like, did Churchill sit in these when he was a kid? Or at some point? That we don't know, but it's fun to imagine, isn't it? Where do you think you, you see most people spend their time downstairs? Well, you know, it's a, the, the museum is a, a living history book, uh, and you know, the exhibits span Churchill's entire career, and then some. You know, the legacy the, the after his life, the speakers who have followed in Churchill's footsteps to Westminster College, President Reagan, um, Herbert Thatcher, President Gorbachev, the last president of the Soviet Union, declared the end of the Cold War from behind the same lectern that Churchill used to arguably begin it. I mean, that poetry of history is all right here. People spend a lot of time reflecting upon that here. And of course, outside, we have eight sections of the Berlin Wall. You know, the concrete manifestation of the Iron Curtain that Churchill warned about. It was a metaphor in 1946, and it became concrete, and it came down, and we have a section of it here. Um, these elements woven all together um, make a very, very rich, rich, and, and, and almost powerful, you know, visceral uh, experience.
Tim, I want to thank you for your time um, for today. I, it's an amazing place to come. It's very peaceful when you come. And I thank you for putting in the work to bring this to the masses. Thank you. It, it's a great story and thank you for helping us to share it.